What up, your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel? You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, January 8th, 2018, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, this go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. The 75th Golden Globe Awards have been handed out. In TV, HBO's Big Little Lies led the pack and nabbed four wins for Best Limited Series, Nicole Kidman for Lead Actress, Laura Dern for Best Supporting Actress, and Alexander Sasgar in a Supporting Role. Amazon's The Marvelous Ms. Mizell won for Best Comedy Series and for Lead Actress for Rachel Brashanahan. Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale... Uh, claimed the prize for Best Drama Television Series. In film, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri claimed four wins, including for Best Drama for Frances McDormand in the Lead Actress category, Martin McDonough for Screenplay, and for Best Supporting Actor for Sam Rockwell. Meanwhile, Guillermo del Toro nabbed the Best Director Prize for The Shape of Water, and Lady Bird won twice for Best Comedy Film and for Lead Actress for Sarah Ronan. For Best Motion Picture and Drama, the award went to three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Best Motion Picture Musical and Comedy went to Lady Bird. Game of the Tour won Best Director for Motion Picture. Frances McDormand won for Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture and Drama. Gary Oldman won for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Drama for his role in The Darkest Hour. Uh, James Franco won Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy for his role in The Disaster Artist. Uh, Sarah Ronan won for Best Actress in a Motion Picture Musical Comedy for Lady Bird. The Handmaid's Tale won Best Television Series Drama. The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell won for Best Television Series Comedy or Musical. Big Little Lies won for Best TV or Limited Series. Nicole Kidman won for Best Performance by an Actress in a Limited Series or Motion Picture Made for Television for a role in Big Little Lies. Ian McGregor won for Best Performance by an Actor in Limited Series or Motion Picture Made for Television for his role in Fargo. Elizabeth Moss won for Best Performance by an Actress in a Television Series Drama for her role in The Handmaid's Tale. Rachel Shanahan won for Best Performance by an Actress in a Television Series Comedy and Musical for The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell. Sterling K. Brown won for Best Performance by an Actor in a Television Series Drama for his role in This Is Us. Aziz Zanasari won for Best Performance by an Actor in a Television Series, Comedy, or Musical for Masters of None. Alexander Skazgar won for Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role in the Series, Limited Series, or Motion Picture Made for Television for his role in Big Little Lies. Laura Dern won for Best Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role in a Series, Limited Series, or Motion Picture Made for Television for Big Little Lies. Sam Rockwell won for, uh, won for Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role in Any Motion Picture for his role in Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Allison Janney won for Best Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role in Any Motion Picture for a role in I, Tanya. Matthew McConaughey uh, won for Best Screenplay Motion Picture for riding Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Uh, Alexander Desplat won for Best Original Score Motion Picture for his score in The Shape of Water. For Best Original Song Motion Picture, the, 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 the Golden Globe went to the song This Is Me. Uh, music and lyrics by Benji Pasquet and Justin Paul for The Greatest Showman. Coco won Best Animated Feature Film. In the Fade won Best Foreign Language Film. The Producers Guild of America has announced its nominees for its Theatrical Motion Picture and Television Awards. The winners will be announced at a ceremony on January 20th at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Los Angeles. The nominees in the top category are for the Daryl Zanuck Award for Outstanding Producer of Theatrical Motion Pictures. The nominees include Judd Apatow and Barry Mendel for The Big Sick, Peter Spears, Luisa Giannino, Emil Georges, and Marco Morabito for Call Me By Your Name, Emma Thomas and Christopher Nolan for Dunkirk, Sean McCrittrick and Edward H. Ham Jr., Jason Bloom, and Jordan Peele for Get Out, Brian Yunkelis, 
Steven Rogers, Margot Robbie and Tom Ackerley for I, Tanya, Scott Rudin, Eli Bush, Evelyn O'Neill for Lady Bird, Mark Gordon, Amy Pascal, Matt Jackson for Molly's Game, Amy Pascal, Steven Spielberg, Kristen McCosco Craiger for The Post, Gemma the Toro, J. Miles Dale for The Shape of Water, Graham Broadbent and Peter Zersnit and Martha McNall for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, and Charles Roven and Richard Suckle, Zack Snyder and Deborah Snyder for Wonder Woman. The award for Outstanding Producer of Animated Theatrical Motion Pictures, the nominees include Ramsey Nieto for The Boss Baby, Darla K. Anderson for Coco, Christopher Mil- Milandre, Janet Healy for Despicable Me 3, Lori Forte, Bruce Anderson for Fernand, and Dan Lin, Phil Lord, and Christopher Miller for the Lego Batman movie. The Norman Felton Award for Outstanding Producer of Episodic Television Drama, the nominees include Bill- Big Little Lies, The Crown, Game of Thrones, The Handmaid's Tale, and Stranger Things. The Danny Thomas Award for Outstanding Producer of Episodic Television Comedy. The nominees include Curving Your Enthusiasm, The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell, Masters of None, Silicon Valley, and Veep. The David L. Wolper Award for Outstanding Producer of Long-Form Television, TV Movies, and Limited Series. The nominees include Black Mirror, Fargo, Feud, Betty and Joan, Sherlock, The Lion Detective, and The Wizard of Lies. The award for outstanding producer of nonfiction television nominees include 30 for 30, 60 Minutes, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Are Known, Leah Remini, Scientology in the Aftermath, and Spielberg. The award for outstanding producer of live entertainment and talk television the nominees include Full Frontier with Samantha B. Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Lake Show with Stephen Colbert, and Saturday Night Live. And the award for Outstanding Producer of, Com- of Competition Television, the nominees include The Amazing Race, American Ninja Warrior, Lip Sync Battle, Top Chef, and The Voice. Britain's Sky Atlantic has released the first glimpse of Benedict Cumberbatch as the title character in its limited series, Patrick Melrose. The British broadcaster tweeted Thursday, Meet your new favorite trouble aristocratic playboy, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Hugo Weaving and Jennifer Jason Lee. Hashtag Patrick Melrose is coming soon. Hashtag pleased to meet you. The one minute preview shows the Sherlock alum drinking heavily and taking part in a group therapy session. Leanne Weaving plays Patrick's parents while Anne Madeley plays his wife. David Nichols wrote all five episodes of the television adaptation of the Edward St. Aubin's novel and Edward Berger directed the program. Showtime will air the series in the United States described in a news release as a story that quote hilariously scores the upper class as it tracks the protagonist Harrowing's Odyssey from a deep traumatic childhood through adult substance abuse and ultimately towards recovery. Netflix released a trailer for David Letterman's new chat show Friday as a list of the first high class guests, high profile guests he has booked as well. The synopsis that accompanies a 45 second preview clip on YouTube, David Letterman is out of retirement and returning to television with a six episode 60 minute Netflix series, My Next Guest needs no introduction with David Letterman. The first episode will debut on January 12th. First installments will stream monthly after that from February through June. The former Late Show host has already confirmed as interviewees George Clooney, Malalia Sasafia, Jay-Z, Tina Fey, Howard Stern, and Barack Obama. Letterman received the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor in October during a special event at the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C. He retired in 2015 after 33 years of hosting a nightly television program. Season 3 of Billions is scheduled to premiere March 25th on Showtime. The cable network released a two-and-a-half-minute trailer Saturday for the new season, which picked up with Paul Giamatti and Damian Lewis's character Chuck Rhodes and Bobby Axelrod in a world that has shifted on its axis, a news release has said. The synopsis reads, both men are still determined to destroy the other, but most able to bow for their own survival amid new forces and powerful enemies. Wendy Rose, Chuck's wife and Axe's performing coach, is all in for both of them, an uneasy and dangerous position for her, and one that ultimately puts her to a decision that could alter the direction of her life irrevocably. Money, power, justice, and revenge are all on the line for each of these characters as well as for the rest of the stellar cast. Rounding out the drama's ensemble are Maggie Siff, Malin Ackerman, Toby Leonard Moore, jo- David Constantinople, Kandalana Rashid, Asia Kate D- Dillon, and Jeffrey DeMunn. 
So this is a renewed at sitcom Young Sheldon for the 2018-2019 broadcast season. Set in 1980s Texas, the show stars Ian Armitage as a child version of the character Jim Parsons plays on The Big Bang Theory. Kelly Call, the president of CBS Entertainment, said in a statement Saturday, Young Sheldon has made a huge impact on our schedule in the short time it's been on the air. While the show's DNA is clearly rooted in The Big Bang Theory, Young Sheldon has staked down on its own place in the TV universe with a unique creative tone, brilliant writing, and a gifted multi-generation cast. We can't wait to see Chuck, Steve, Jim, and Todd's vision for how the Cooper family deals with Sheldon growing a year older and smarter. The series co-stars Zoe Perry, Lance Barber, Annie Potts, Reagan Revord, and Montana Jordan, and features the voice of Parsons as narrator. Parsons, Chuck Lorre, Stephen Malaro, and Todd Spiewak serves as an executive producer. FX says it has ordered 10 episodes of the Son of Anarchy spinoff series Mayans MC, starring J.D. Pardo, Edward James Omo, Sarah Bolger, Clayton Sardanas, Richard Cabral, Michael Arby, Raul Trujillo, Antonio Jaramillo, and Carla Barata. The motorcycle gang drama is expected to premiere this year, Deadline.com reported Friday. TVGuide.com says that the series will take place after the events of the Sunday Anarchy finale. It will focus on a group of bikers who cross paths with the Sam Crow characters from Sons of Anarchy, most of whom are now dead. Brendan Fraser and Hilary Sang, beloved actors who have worked sporadically in recent years, will be seen in 2018's FX drama Trust. Uh, the cable network tweeted Friday, I embrace this from the boots and belts up. Brandon Fraser on playing his character Chase. Hashtag TCA18. Hashtag Trust FX. Quoting the actor as saying at the Television Critics Association press tour. Another FX post says, you have me at hello. Hillary Sank after getting the call to work with Danny Boyle and Simon Befoy on hashtag TrustFX, hashtag TCA18. Variety says that the small screen version of the fact-based 1973 John Paul Getty III kidnap drama will debut on March 25th. Befoy created Trust and executive produced it alongside Danny Boyle, who directed the first three episodes. Harris Dickinson plays Getty, Donald Sutherland plays his grandfather, Swank plays his mother, and Fraser plays a young a family employee trying to bring the young man home. Netflix casts Mad Men alum Kernan Shipka as Sabrina Spellman in a new young adult drama Archie Comics announced Friday. The show is based on the chilly adventures of Sabrina comic books. It also is a spinoff of the CW series Riverdale and a reboot of the 1990 sitcom Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Executive producer and Archie Comics chief creative officer Roberto Aguilar Sacasa says, We're all such huge fans of Kernan's work that when we started talking about who this new incarnation of Sabrina could be, her name was on everyone's wish. List. This is a darker, more macabre version of Sabrina, and we are incredibly excited for people to see Kiernan making this iconic character her own. The Detroit and Sing Street actor Jack Rayner is set to star in Strange Angel, a Ridley Scott drama uh, set in 1930s Los Angeles. Rayner will play Jack Parsons, a brilliant and ambitious blue-collar worker who started as a janitor at a chemi- uh, chemical factory, but has fantastical dreams that led him to the birth of the unknown discipline of American rocketry. A news release from CBS All Access says, adding, along the way, he fell into a mysterious world that included sex magic rituals at night and became a discipline of occultism. Alistair Crowley, Parsons used Crowley's teaching of self-actualization to, su- to support his unimaginable and unprecedented endeavor to the stars. Created by Mark Heyman, the show is based on the George Pendle's book of the same name, which was inspired by real people and events. CBS All Access is also the streaming home to the original programs The Good Fight and Star Trek Discovery. ABC Comedy of the Mayor, starring Brandon Michael Hall, Leah Michelle, and Yvette Nicole Brown, has been canceled after one year. Uh, and one season. The network has pulled the series from its Tuesday 9.30 p.m. time slot, which will now be filled with reruns of Modern Family, Entertainment Weekly reported. Nine episodes of The Mayor have already been aired. The show was originally slated to return from mid-season hiatus on January 9th, with four remaining episodes Variety reported. ABC has no plans to broadcast the remaining episodes. The Mayor follows an aspiring rapper played by Hall who becomes mayor of his hometown after entering into an election as part of a publicity stunt. Michelle stars as the former classmate and the mayor's chief of staff with Brown as the title character's mother. 
The premiere of the small screen adaptation of Agatha Christie's mystery ordeal by innocence has been delayed so Ed Westwick's scenes may be reshot. The Hour Report said Christian Cook is replacing Westwick, who was accused by three women la- last year of sexual assault in the BBC Amazon project. Westwick has denied any wrongdoing. Co-starring Bill Nye and Anna Chancellor, Matthew Good, Eleanor Tom- Tomlinson, Anthony Boyle, Luke Treadaway, Morvan Christie, Crystal Clark, Ella Purnell, and Alice Eve, the television movie was scheduled to debut in December when it was delayed so Cook may film his scenes in Scotland later this month. The new premiere date has not been announced yet. Westwick has not publicly addressed his elimination from the project. In early November, he tweeted an expression of gratitude to Vanity Fair for running a preview article on Ordeal by Innocence along with cast photos. Days later, he was back on the social media platform to deny the sex abuse allegations against him. Uh, Westwick wrote in his most recent post dated November 9th, It is disheartening and sad to me that as a result of two unverifiable and probably untrue social media claims, there are some in this environment who could ever conclude I have had anything to do with such vile and horrific conduct. I have absolutely not, and I am cooperating with the authorities so that they can clear my name as soon as possible. Theater icon Ben Vereen has issued an apology for his inappropriate conduct after four women accused him of sexual abuse and harassment during the Florida Community Theater staging of Hair two years ago. The 71-year-old performer said in a statement to the New York Daily News on Friday, I'd like to apologize directly to the female cast members of the musical Hair for my inappropriate conduct when I was directed the the production in 2015. While it was my intention to create an environment that replicated the themes of that musical during the rehearsal process, I have since come to understand that it is my conduct, not my intentions, which are relevant here. So I am not going to make any excuses because the only thing that matters here is acknowledging and apologizing for the effect of my conduct on the lives of these women. The Tony Award winner added, going forward, my having come to terms with my past conduct will inform all my future interactions, not only with women, but all individuals. I hope these women will find it in their hearts to accept my sincere apology and forgive me. The actresses told the newspaper Marine Kiss hugged and touched them without permission, requested oral sex, and sent them sexually uh, suggestive media uh, uh, message via text. BroadwayWorld.com said that the production, which ran at the Venice Theater main stage in Venice from November 9, 2015 through December 13, 2015, featured a volunteer, volunteer cast that also included Varane's son, Aaron. The elder Varane's Broadway credits include Pippin, Wicked, and Jesus Christ Superstar. He is also a popular television actor and longtime supporter of comedian Bill Cosby, who has been accused of drugging and sexually abusing dozens of women. Cosby has denied any wrongdoing. New Miss America chairwoman Gretchen Carlson says that she wants to bring big changes to the long-running beauty pageant. Carlson said Friday during an interview with Good Morning America, I've had so many great ideas for this organization. I'll be talking about all of those with all the other board members and the eventual CEO and staff of Miss America. Uh, She continued, so what I would love to say about that is it's please stay tuned because I plan to make this organization 100% about empowering women. The potential changes Carlson discussed include opening up the pageant's guidelines for entry and changing the competition's restriction on age, marital status, and pregnancy. Carlson said, I'm open to looking at all that before discussing the LGBTQ inclusion in the pageant. She says, recently we had our first open open lesbian contestant. Fantastic. The lesbian transgender community has already reached out to me. I mean, I'm open to speaking to every single person who wants to have a voice. Carlson, a former Fox News host who was crowned Miss America in 1989 was recently named chairwoman of the organization's board of directors along with three other former Miss America winners including Laura Kaplker Fleiss who won in 2012, Heather French Henry who won in 2000, and Kate Schindel who won in 1998. The position makes Carlson the first former Miss America woman to serve as chairwoman. The King's Speech actress Helena Bottom Carter is in talks to play the middle-aged version of Princess Margaret in the next two seasons of The Crown. Deadline.com reported the negotiations Friday. A report also says that the 51-year-old actress is close to a deal to replace 28-year-old Vanessa Kirby, who played the rebellious role in the period's drama's first two seasons, opposite 33-year-old Claire Foyd's Elizabeth II. Olivia Coleman is to portray the monarch in season three. 
Oscar-winning actress Halle Berry is ready for 2018. The 51-year-old star shared a sultry snapshot Thursday on Instagram after bidding a cheeky goodbye to the past year. Berry awed fans by posting a picture of herself posing on a beach in a black bikini. The picture has received over 200,000 likes as of Friday morning. The actress captioned the snapshot, coming for you 2018. Barry's followers gushed about the picture in the comments, with many remarking the star was as beautiful as ever. One person wrote, stunning and age to five. Another added, you look beautiful than girls with the age of 20 to 30. Barry rang in the New Year Sunday by sharing a photo of herself giving the middle finger to 2017. Uh, She wrote, Dear 2017, you could be a good person with a kind spirit and still tell people to go fuck themselves when needed. P.S. Thank you, middle finger, for always standing up for me. Barry is among the stars to publicly support the Time's Up campaign. The equality and anti-harassment movement formed in the wake of the sexual harassment and assault allegations against producer Harvey Weinstein and other Hollywood players. Barry wrote in a post Monday, Time's Up on Silence, Time's Up on Waiting, Time's Up on tolerating discrimination, harassment, or abuse. Kourtney Kardashian dances with Yunus Benjima in a rare photo of the couple on Instagram. The 30-year-old reality star shared a sweet moment with the 24-year-old former boxer in a new picture Thursday. Kardashian posted a snapshot of Benjima dipping her during a dance while surrounded by trees decorated with festive lights. The photo has received over 1.8 million likes as of Friday morning. The television personality captioned the picture, Dancing by the Moon. Kardashian has been linked to Benjima since December 2016, but rarely posts with the former boxer. She said in a November episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashian, she met her beau in Paris the night before Sister Kim Kardashian's robbery in October 2016. Uh, the star explained he was fr- he was friends with our friends. The next night, we got the phone call about Kim. Uh, he, she said of how Benjima stayed with her and served as a translator in the wake of Kim's robbery. He was like, I'm not leaving you guys. And he's like, had to translate everything. Kardashian shares three children, Mason, Penelope, and Rain, with her ex-partner, Scott Disick. People reported in December that the star is very happy and that her relationship with Benjima is serious. Kaylin Jenner says she didn't trust the Kardashians enough to share her gender confirmation surgery plans. The 68-year-old television personality explained on Thursday's episode of Pierce Morgan's Life Stories that she kept her sex reassignment surgery secret because she feared her ex-wife, Kris Jenner, and former Kardashian stepchildren would leak the news. Uh, Jenner told host Pierce Morgan, I didn't tell anybody why. It's none of their business. It really wasn't that big of a deal. I went to the hospital. No big deal. I already have been living as Kaylin for a year and a half. She added, I didn't want them to leak it to the press. Okay. And there was no reason for them to know about it before confirming she didn't trust the Kardashians. Of course not. Of course I didn't trust them. Jenner confirmed she's transgender in April 2015 after splitting from Chris in September 2014 following nearly 23 years of marriage. She underwent gender confirmation surgery in January 2017, which she detailed in her memoir, Secrets of My Life. Uh, The star said of Chris's children, Courtney, Kim, Chloe, and Rob Kardashian, I don't talk to the Kardashians anymore. The only ones I am concerned about are Kendall and Kylie. They are my biological kids. Jenner spent time with Kendall and her elder daughter with Chris on Thursday. She shared a photo with the 22-year-old model on Instagram writing, My Girl Loves Horses. Kid Harrington, famous for playing Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, allegedly got drunk and got thrown out of a New York City's bar fly on Friday night. TMZ reported that the British actor was intoxicated and became loud and disruptive during a game of pool at the tavern. After being asked to leave the pub and exiting voluntarily, he was reportedly returned and was dragged outside. The New York Daily News said Barfly had nothing to say about the incident when contacted, and Harrington's representatives did not immediately respond to the newspaper's request for comment. Season 8 of Game of Thrones is set to air on HBO in 2019. Actor and producer Brad Pitt bid $120,000 to watch an episode of Game of Thrones with Amelia Clark, who plays the nearest to Jerry on a fantasy drama. TMZ said the bidding at the charity auction started at $20,000 and went back and forth between Pitt and a non-celebrity bidder who has not been identified in media reports. Pitt bowed out of the competition when the other bidder offered $160,000 for the experience. A witness told Us Weekly during the first uh, auction, Brad was on his phone. When the auction announced Amelia Clark, they called her out in the crowd, and Brad literally turned his his whole neck to find and look at her and enthusiastically clap. 
The source continued. He offered $80,000 in the auction to watch Game of Thrones with Amelia. Amelia was covering her mouth and giggling. Leonardo DiCaprio enthusiastically watched the whole auction, turning his head back and forth between Brad and Amelia. Pitt later offered $120,000 and raised his arms in excitement, but was out at $150,000. He laughed hysterically when he gave up and they called him out for it. He clapped and cheered when someone else took it for $160,000. Sean Penn's gala dinner and auction to benefit the J.P. Haitian Relief Organization took place at the Milk Studios in Los Angeles Saturday. Actor and rapper Donald Glover says he and his girlfriend have welcomed their second child. Glover told Entertainment Tonight about his longtime partner Friday. She's great, she's good, baby's born, she's happier now. Glover also confirmed the birth of his second son to People magazine, although he did not disclose the child's name or birthday. The entertainer and his girlfriend, who has been identified only as Michelle in the media, also have a son named Legend, who was born in 2016. Glover, who is known for his recording career under the name Childish Gambino, as well as his acting role in Atlanta and Community, will soon be seen in Solo, A Star Wars Story, and The Lion King. And passing to report, comedic actor Jerry Van Dyke has died in his Arkansas ranch. He was 86. Shirley Van Dyke told TMZ Saturday she and her husband were involved in a car crash more than two years ago, and Jerry's health has since deteriorated. Van Dyke appeared with his older brother, Mary Poppins icon Dick Van Dyke, on the Dick Van Dyke Show and was a popular guest on the Ed Sullivan Show and the Judy Garland Show, TVGuide.com noted. He also co-starred with Craig T. Nelson on the sitcom Coach, from 1989 to 1997, and popped up occasionally on The Middle and Yes, Dear. Van Dyke was 86. Demi Lovato was feeling free from self-criticism as she posted a new swimsuit photo. The 25-year-old singer shared a body-positive message with fans in an Instagram post Thursday amid her continued recovery from an eating disorder. Lovato captioned the picture, So, I'm secure, insecure about my legs in this picture, but I'm posting it because I look so happy, and this year I've decided I'm letting go of my perfectionism and embracing freedom from self-criticism. She says, learning to love my body the way it is is challenging, but life-changing. Giving up my eating disorder has been the most challenging journey of my life, but I work every day towards solid recovery, even if I mess up sometimes. Today, I'm feeling strong. Uh, she, the star encouraged her followers, you can all do this too, if it's possible. Thank you, God, for this new chapter in my life. Hashtag Ed Recovery. Hashtag Happy AF. Lavao spent three months in rehab in 2010 for bulimia and drug and alcohol abuse. She opened up about her eating disorder in her YouTube documentary, Demi Lovato Simply Complicated, which also debuted in October. The star said in an interview with Teen Vogue, It was really hard to talk about it on camera, but I knew that if I was honest, it would help somebody understand. She said, Sometimes I'm not perfect with my recovery and eating issues, but I keep fighting, and I want people to see that. Lovato previously told Fitness Magazine that she learned to appreciate her body for what it is. She last released the album Tell Me You Love Me in September and will kick off an accompanying tour with DJ Kali in February. Music superstar Nicki Minaj and Nas have reportedly split after eight months of dating. Sources told TMZ the couple called it quits a few weeks ago after the relationship fizzled out. The Minaj and Nas live in different cities was said to have played a role in the breakup. Word of Minaj and Nas' split follows rumors Minaj is pregnant with her first child, although insiders deny the 35-year-old rapper is expecting. MTO News had reported Tuesday that Minaj discovered she was pregnant over Thanksgiving. Minaj's ex-boyfriend, Sarah Free Samuels, was among those to react to the Star's report split. Samuels commented on an Instagram post from The Shade Room about the breakup, which the website later shared. The 36-year-old rapper wrote, Yep, we both have been having bad luck in this department, appearing to reference his own split from Nicki Minaj. Minaj and Nas were first spotted in April following Minaj's split from Meek Mill. Meek Mill said in an interview with Power 99 Philadelphia radio station in July that his breakup with Minaj was a loss. The rapper said breaking up with anyone you love is a loss, period. Rita Ora and Liam Payne have released their Fifty Shades Free collaboration. The British stars and singers shared the duet for you on Thursday after teasing the single on social media. Ora tweeted to her 6.6 million followers. It's here. Listen to my new single, Hashtag For You, with at Liam Payne from the Hashtag Fifty Shades Free soundtrack. 
Payne wrote on his own account, mine and Arita Ora's song, Hashtag For You, taken from the Hashtag 50 Shades Freed soundtrack, is now out. For You is an upbeat dance number featuring the lyrics, Waiting for a lifetime for you, been breaking for a lifetime for you. The song will appear on the 50 Shades Freed soundtrack, which debuted Friday, according to E! News. 50 Shades Freed is the third and final installment of the 50 Shades film series, the movie which stars Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan as Anastasia Seal and Christian Grey are based on the E.L. James book trilogy. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle is the number one movie in North America, earning $36 million in receipts this weekend. Box Office Mojo.com announced Sunday. Coming in number two is Insidious, the last uh, key with $29.3 million, followed by Star Wars The Last Jedi at number three with $23.6 million, The Greatest Showman at number four with $13.8 million, and Pitch Perfect 3 at number five with $10.2 million. Rounding up the top tier are Fernand with number six and with $7.7 million, Molly's Game at number seven with $7 million, Darkest Hour at number eight with $6.4 million, Coco at number nine with $5.5 million, and All the Money in the World at number 10 with $3.6 million. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1946, Elvis Presley receives his first guitar. In competing versions of the story, what Elvis Presley really wanted for his birthday was a rifle or a bicycle. But both fairly typical choices for a boy his age growing up on the outskirts of Tupelo, Mississippi. Instead, Elvis' highly protective mother, Gladys, she never let me out of her sight, Elvis would later say, took him to the Tupelo hardware store and bought a gift that would change the course of history. A $6.95 guitar. It was on this day in 1946, and Elvis Aaron Presley was 11 years old. The historical significance of putting a guitar into the hands of a young man who would later help define rock and roll is obvious. For Elvis himself, however, getting that guitar was just one more step in a thoroughly yet total unplanned program of childhood musical development that prepared him perfectly to ignite a revolution 10 years later. Music surrounded the young Elvis Presley, music from all types that would inform his later recordings and performances. From country, bluegrass, blues, and gospel, to mainstream pop, and even opera. Gladys Presley told stories of Elvis as a toddler jumping out of her lap and running down the aisle of the First Assembly of God's Church so that he could stand directly in front of the choir, singing along and imitating their movements. Local radio was dominated by country and western music, which Elvis adored. As And, and as Peter Guranick, the author of the definitive early Elvis biography, Last Train to Memphis, put it, Elvis absorbed the blues from the radio and the pervasive contact that a poor white family like the Presleys, always living on the edge of town and respectability, would necessarily have with blacks. Born within five years and 500 miles of one another, future greats such as James Brown, Little Richard, Carl Perkins, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Sam Cooke were being shaped by this same mix of musical influences, as well as by a culture in which listening to music generally meant participating in it, too. This generation of musicians would give birth to whole new genres and subgenres of American music, not just rock and roll, but rockabilly, rhythm and blues, soul, and more. When his first guitar in hand, Elvis Presley took a key step towards joining that list of music greats on this date in 1946. And as your entertainment report for Monday, January 8th, 2018, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for The Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you all.